On March 23rd, Southwest Airlines Flight 147 had a near miss with the tower at LaGuardia Airport while attempting their second full straight-in ILS approach to runway 04 at LaGuardia with the weather at minimums. The aircraft subsequently went around and diverted to another airport. We now have an ATC preliminary report of the incident. Let's check it out. Go around, go around. So I run the heading, climb into 2000. Climb into 2000, 2000. Climb into 2000, that's 47. This guy was not aligned with the runway at all. He was like east of the final. He was not going to land the runway. Alpha 147, you have approach. 5 and 18, 4,000, say your intention. 4,000. And uh, get springers around one more time and we'll uh, actually stand by. Okay, stand by. And approach Southwest 147, we'd like to go ahead and divert to Philadelphia. Uh, the voice of reason. Divert. Not a good day. The weather at the time of the approach is down to minimums, about one mile visibility and 600 overcast with winds out of the north at about 16 knots. LaGuardia is located in some of the busiest airspace in the world, nestled right in between Kennedy, Newark, and Teterboro. Runway 04 at LaGuardia is about 7,000 feet long with water on the departure end and EMAS are engineered Material arresting system is now located at the end of each of the runways here at LaGuardia. That's crushable concrete that'll catch you if in the event you overrun the runway. So all of these factors, especially on a bad weather day, makes LaGuardia Airport one of the most demanding airports to operate out of in the airline system today. So let's start with a play-by-play -play analysis of the ATC audio as provided by Live ATC and as published here on Victor's website, Vass Aviation. Support his YouTube channel. Guardia Tower Southwest 1. Guardia Tower Southwest 1, 47 ILS 4. Southwest 147, Guardia Tower only 4, Clear Land. 4, Clear Land, Southwest 147. This is uh, Southwest 147 on their first of two attempts to land on runway 04. JetBlue 2813 inbound for ILS 4. JetBlue 2813, LaGuardia Tower, only 4, Quiddle Land, traffic support zone position 1 3. Currently showing the uh, same speed as traffic, uh, 12 o'clock, 3 and a half miles per hour. Runway 4, Quiddle Land, JetBlue 2813, Roger. Here's the METAR or the weather at the time of the incident. Winds 040 at 16 knots, 1 mile visibility, runway visual range varying between 4,000 and 6,000 feet, overcast at 600 feet. In Southwest 147, we got to go around. Southwest 147, maintain 2,000, fly runway heading. Runway heading 2,000, Southwest 147. Southwest 147, you got a chance, just let me know the reason. We're too fast, too high with the tailwind, Southwest 147. Got it, thanks. Okay, no harm, no foul. The Southwest first attempt, and we'll look at the ADSB data, they elect to go around early because they are simply unstable. Remember the stabilized approach requirements for airline or aircraft you need to be on speed fully configured by the final approach fix or certainly below 1,000 feet AGL. Now the winds are out of the north. He mentioned a tailwind at his altitude. Remember the winds vary considerably based on your altitude. So what's happening on the ground is not necessarily what he's experiencing there at his altitude at about 2,000 feet. Southwest 147, climb maintain 3,000. 3,000, Southwest 147. Southwest 147, maintain 3,000, fly runway heading and contact push 134.9er. 3,000 runway heading, 30, was that 34.9, 147? Yep, 134.9er. See ya. So they take it around for another approach. Guardia Tower, Southwest 147, ILS 4. Southwest 147, Guardia Tower, only 4, clear to land. Runway 4, touchdown, RVR, 6,000, roll out, 5,000, Runway visual range down to 6,000 feet. It's right down to minimums. Very crummy weather. And remember, they're doing the full ILS, localizer and glide slope. And they are both in service. 
Oh, last two letters, JetBlue 698, check out some alien. We'll go ahead, 729 or 790. Tower JetBlue 698 going around. JetBlue 698, climb maintain 2000, fly runway heading. 2000, runway heading, JetBlue 698. JetBlue 698, climb maintain 3000. Maintain 3000, JetBlue 698. And JetBlue 698, when you get a chance, just give the reason for the mess. Uh, looks like we got some wind shear, JetBlue 698. Roger, thank you. Uh, contact first, 134.9. Okay, so JetBlue, ahead of Southwest 147, goes around. Well, first he got that low altitude alert, and then he went around due to wind shear. It's not microburst, it's a wind shear. So if Southwest is reporting a tailwind at about 1,000 to 2,000 feet, and the winds at the airport are out of the north at 16 knots, that means there's going to be a wind shear, an increasing headwind shear from uh, southwest's current altitude or from about 2,000 feet as you approach down to the runway. So, And that wind shear can result in a drop in altitude and JetBlue apparently got himself a low altitude alert as the automatic equipment in LaGuardia alerted the controllers to that effect. So sketchy weather, gusty winds. Southwest 147, let me know where you break out at. Will do. They're in the goo. They can't see the ground. 1263, look like that. 1 3, line up and wait. Chapter Lance 4. American 1263, runway 1 3, line up and wait. So on their second approach, Southwest 147 deviates considerably to the right, of course. We'll look about at that in a minute. Go around, go around. So I run the heading, climb maintain 2000. Climb maintain 2000, 2000. So that's a different ATC controller. Apparently there was a shift change, or maybe it was a controller from a different frequency. But that controller, she called the go around without saying who she was. She just, it quite suddenly surprised her to see southwest airlines breaking out of the weather this far off of course and coming right at him at the tower continue climbing southwest 147 and uh, when able to say reason why you were like uh, not on the approach we got 574184 RBR, 3,500 contact tower, 18.7. We're unable that, uh, we're 4,000 is the best we can do. 74, cancel approach, going to maintain 3,000. Now Brickyard has to go around because his minimum RVR for his approach is 4,000 feet. They just reported 3,500 feet, so Brickyard knows his limits, knows the rules, and he's got to go around. I cancel the approach, clear uh, 3,000 runway heading, Brickyard 5784. Southwest 147, you with me? Yep, just trying to work things out here. Southwest 147, we're climbing at 2000, heading 060. Brickyard 5784, climb maintain 4000, fly runway, or fighting at 040. The crew southwest is clearly shaken here. 4040, Brickyard 5784. And of course, the RVR went up to 4000 as soon as we came to the approach. Hate to see it. Yeah, it's variable between the four, and now it's up to 45, and that's a rollout 4,000. Brick Air 5784, climb maintain 4,000, expedite the climb. We're climbing, Brick Air 5784. Okay, Southwest 147, we're at 2,000 feet, heading 060. I'd like to uh, continue climbing. Yeah, just climb maintain 2,000, and uh, contact approach 120.8. 20.8, Southwest 147. And what were the reasons for the two go around? Now that is really odd to me. That does sound like Southwest 147, and they are asking the controller the reason for the two go arounds, as if they didn't know why. That is very odd. That was not aligned with the runway at all. He was like east of the final. He was not going to land the runway. She said you were not aligned, or it was not aligned with the runway at all. It was like east of final. You were not going to land on the runway at all. Center Southwest 147, 2,000 feet, heading 060. Southwest 147, you have approach. Finally maintain 4,000, say your intention. 4,000, and uh, I guess bring us around one more time.
correct time, and we'll uh, actually stand by. Okay, stand by. And approach right. Southwest 147, we'd like to go ahead and divert to Philadelphia. Uh, the voice of reason. <laughs> divert. Not a good day. Uh, to Pittsburgh, our alternate. Southwest 147, Roger, you're clear to Pittsburgh for now via radar vectors. Uh, clear to Pittsburgh via radar vectors. Climb AK 5000 Southwest. Okay, now let's check out the instrument approach and the ATC briefing and some ADSB data. A quick look at the FAA plates for the ILS or localizer runway 4 approach shows that the ILS procedure is up and operational straight in ILS 4 with a three quarter mile visibility limit. But buried here in all the notes is a important, very important note, autopilot couple approach not authorized. Now let's go take a look at the Jepson approach plates. Most of us in the airline world fly with Jepson plates, a much better laid out approach plate system with all the important information right up here at the top. And the first note you run into, autopilot coupled approach not authorized for runway 04. So the ILS is working, the glide slope is working. It's just that you are not authorized to be coupled up to the autopilot for this approach. And it's unclear as to why this is the case and there's lots of rumors and information out there. Basically, the glide slope and or localizer will get a bit wavy, if you will. It'll, it'll move suddenly the closer you get to the runway. And with the autopilot connected, it'll jerk the airplane around quite a bit on the final approach. If you're hand flying the ILS, you can take some of that motion out of it and still get down to minimums by hand flying the approach. So the question, the first question for investigators and that we don't know the answer to at this time was, was the pilot hand flying this approach, the Southwest 147, or did they have the autopilot coupled? And I was hoping that over here on ADSB Exchange, we would get some insight to that because over here on ADSB Exchange under the stuff column, let me move this over so you can see it. Stand by, time to bust out the big mouse. Over here on ADSB Exchange, under stuff, we can see nav modes. Unfortunately, Southwest uh, data does not report through, via ADSB what nav mode the aircraft is in, so they don't have that information here at ADSB Exchange. But oftentimes, you can see if the autopilot is engaged and what mode the autopilot is engaged, because eventually ATC will be able to see exactly which buttons you have pushed on your autopilot mode control panel. And looking also at the ADSB data from ADSB Exchange, we can see the first approach, the aircraft Southwest 147 lined up just about perfectly with the taxiway, what is that, Bravo on their first approach. And on their second approach, they began deviating way back here to the right and ended up going just to the left of the control tower located right here. Now we can download this KML data from ADSB Exchange, throw it into Google Earth, and this is what it looks like. First, just looking vertically, here we see the first pass going just to the right side of taxiway Bravo instead of runway 04, and the second pass deviating right back over the freeway here, well to the right of course, and putting them just to the left of the control tower here. And if we tilt this down, we can get an idea of the altitudes that they were at. So here we can see the missed approach not beginning until way over here for Southwest 147. The first missed approach on the first pass occurred very early in the approach back in here. But this second approach brought them down very low to the ground. And this is, again, ADSB data and geometric altitude, and that's all got to be corrected for actual altitude. You'll find that this aircraft was right down to minimums, if not potentially even below minimums. But the aircraft was climbing safely once they got up over the tower. So if we go back and replay this second approach on ADSB Exchange, we start out here at 975 feet and 139 knots and 500 feet per minute rate of descent. 750 feet, 141 knots, 
960 feet per minute rate of descent. Just go by data point by data point. Here they begin to deviate to the right. 625 feet, 320 feet per minute rate of descent. That's barometric altitude versus geometric altitude. Barometric altitude of 550 feet, geometric altitude of 350 feet, 832 feet per minute rate of descent. Barometric altitude of 350 feet, geometric altitude of just 150 feet coming up on the freeway here. And they now they get that go around, go around, go around call. They're climbing at 300 feet and 576 feet per minute, climbing to 700 feet with a geometric altitude of 425 feet as they approach the tower. And right there, let's pause that. We've got 900 feet barometric altitude, 675 feet geometric altitude with no rate of climb noted at that particular altitude. And that tower at LaGuardia is over 200 feet tall. Okay, now let's get into the air traffic mandatory occurrence report as reported by LaGuardia on March 23rd. A lot of um, acronyms here I'm not too familiar with. The MOR reported by the FLM, not sure what that is. Did equipment outage potentially contribute to the event? No. Was a memory aid required? No. Was training in progress? No. Was this a possible near mid-air collision? No. Southwest 147, Boeing 737-800, local control. Was this a possible pilot deviation? No, class airspace of B, Bravo. Was possible pilot deviation validated? No, military pilot deviation? No. Was this verified uh, near mid-air collision? No. Summary, Southwest 147 of Boeing 737-800 was issued a missed approach due to not being lined up with the runway, no alert from the ASDE, from the automatic uh, ground surveillance or the automatic equipment in the tower. They did not receive any warning from the automation that they have available to them in the tower. It was the controller's eyes that alerted them to the situation. QA summary, Cedar and Falcon reviewed. Well, what's that? CEDAR is the Comprehensive Electronic Data and Analysis Reporting Program that's automated through the FAA. And FALCON refers to the surface movement monitoring system available to the air traffic controllers. Near City, Queens, New York, Southwest Airlines 147-737-800 was inbound to LaGuardia via the ILS approach to runway 04. So again, there was some uh, misunderstanding as to whether this was a localizer only approach no it's the full ILS approach is available glide slope glide slope and localizer southwest 147 had executed a missed approach on their first approach due to being high fast and unstable on their second approach southwest 147 was cleared to land runway 4 and issued the RVR or runway visual range a PRB was conducted not sure what that means Southwest Airlines 147, some of you controllers here can help fill in the blanks in the comment section below. Southwest Airlines 147 appeared to be drifting right of the localizer and reached approximately 100 feet mean sea level, according to Falcon, the automatic surveillance equipment. The new controller, and I don't mean, I don't think they mean new as in newly hired. I think that means new as in they just had done a shift change. The new, that's why we heard the voice change in the ATC audio tapes from live ATC from Victor. The new controller, without using a call sign, transmitted go round, go round, fly runway heading, climb and maintain 2,000 feet, climb and maintain 2,000 feet, 2,000 feet. That should be in quotes in the report because that's directly what she said. At this point, the aircraft was on about a one quarter mile final and approximately 1,300 feet right of the localizer and continuing to drift to the right. When you're on a ILS approach and you are more than one third of a dot off of course from the left or the right of the localizer, you need to go around. So was this crew, was this, was this crew using the correct equipment? Was the localizer tracking incorrectly was this an instrument problem or a crew problem 
The two pilots responded. They responded to the go-around call. Southwest 147 acknowledged with the call sign. Southwest 147 appeared to be approximately 1,400 feet right of center line, indicating 100 feet on the Falcon when they initiated the go-around, well below minimums. Now, they had broken out of the weather, but what were they looking at? No aircraft or vehicles appeared to be in the ILS critical area. If you get vehicles... When the weather's down that low, you cannot have anybody encroaching on the ILS critical area. The ILS critical area is marked by paint on the runway, and the ground controllers should stop the aircraft short of the ILS critical area so they don't impinge on the localizer glide slope signal for the landing aircraft when the weather is this low. The ASDE and ATAP did not alert. None of the automatic equipment in the LaGuardia Tower alerted them to this situation. It was only the sharp eyes of the controller that caught this. The ASDE analysis has been requested by QA. Southwest Airlines 147 diverted to Philadelphia. Validation complete. So this is a very disturbing report. These altitudes are much lower than were originally thought from the ADSB data. We now need the data from the aircraft, the FOQA data from the 737, and hopefully the NTSB and or somebody has a has been able to capture this data and possibly even captured the uh, onboard onboard cockpit voice recorders. Again, if they did not capture this data right away, this the voice recorder data will have been written over. But if they at least get the aircraft data, it'll go a long way as to explaining what went on here. Was the crew flying with the autopilot on when in fact they should have been flying with the autopilot off for this particular approach? Was the localizer itself tracking far to the right, of course, did the aircraft show that they were on localizer and on glide slope or were they off localizer and should have gone around much earlier a lot of questions now to answer to regarding this atc report i hope this gives you a little better understanding of what we know so far to this point regarding this incident if you find this information helpful please consider like and subscribe to keep updated on current events as they unfold. As we get more information here, we'll keep you posted. Thank you so much for your support, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.